I live so far under a rock, I basically live under a boulder. So I didn't really know what K-pop was all about. I knew it had something to do with music. I knew it had something to do with Korea. I knew the girls were beautiful and that was about as much as I knew. Then I started getting inundated with comments under my YouTube videos asking me to make a video all about K-pop and the unrealistic beauty standards that K-pop promotes. And I was like, ah! Oh, do. You know what? I'm just gonna have to delve into it. I'm gonna have to start researching and figure out what all this is about. And so I did. <laughs> Huge thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. I gotta tell you straight off the bat, June's Journey is my favorite game to play and I've played a lot of mobile games. I find them relaxing. Yes, I love reading. Yes, I love YouTube, but sometimes it feels like my brain is going 100 miles an hour and I don't want more stimulation. I just wanna chill out. June's Journey is that but fun. I love the visuals. I love the era it's set in. I love chilling out on the sofa and putting my mind to work, finding all the little specimens in the scene. It's not particularly difficult, but it focuses your mind trying to find all the hidden objects in each scene so that you can move on to the next level. If you're like me and love anything vintage, you will love this game. It's set in the 1920s and June, who's the main protagonist, is trying to solve the mystery of her sister's murder. Very entertaining. I love it. It's totally free to download, so I'll pop the link in the description box down below so you guys can download it too and have a little relax this evening and a little play. Let's get into it. So for those of you who live under my boulder with me, what is K-pop anyway? K-pop is short for Korean popular music, a genre that developed in South Korea and rapidly took off all over the world. K-pop is huge, dominating TV dramas, influencing the skincare industry and blowing up the music charts globally. And honestly, I can see why. The music is upbeat, it's catchy and the K-pop stars are ridiculously talented. They manage to sing, dance and act to perfection and they are so so gorgeous. There is a lot of good when it comes to K-pop and as such K-pop has billions of fans worldwide who literally live and breathe K-pop and are super immersed in the whole culture of K-pop. But on this channel we focus on beauty standards and breaking through the bullshit. So that is what we're going to focus on in this video. So why exactly was I essentially grossed out by what I discovered about K-pop and beauty standards? So let's start with the obvious. Let's start with the K-pop idols. A K-pop idol is an artist within the K-pop industry and usually these idols can do everything. So they model, they act, they sing and dance and they are extremely talented folks. Now here's where things get interesting and essentially it's at the very start of the K-pop idol's career. In order to be a K-pop idol, young hopefuls and I'm talking like young, young children, are sent to what's known as training companies. These training companies are also sometimes known as child pop star factories. These children who want to one day be a K-pop idol live in these pop star factory houses. They learn to sing and dance and act and do all of the things for brutally long hours every single day. They are under strict contracts, so they can't always see their parents when they want to. They can't just leave when they want to. It's it's a whole big color blue, but that's not even the worst part of it. I shall get into the worst part of it in a second. Now, beauty standards standards are entwined with K-pop idol culture. Unlike with other musical genres whose bands may include a bassist, a guitarist, a lead singer, a drummer, in K-pop bands they have another role which is known as the visual. Eh? A, a visual? I was like, what does that even mean? Well, according to articles, K-pop entertainment companies realized that the key to a successful K-pop band was to ensure that each band had a good mix of individuals with different characteristics and fan appeal. So you'd have the good singer, the good dancer, the nice one, and the good looking one. The role of the visual in K-pop is to be the face of the group. So usually that means that the most attractive band member is chosen for this role. To be fair, even though the role of visual isn't exactly official in Western culture, it still actually is a thing. For example, you've got Nick Carter in the Backstreet Boys, Justin Timberlake in NSYNC, Beyonce in Destiny's Child, Nicole Scherzinger, Pussycat Dolls, Harry Styles, One Direction. They, to me, would all also be examples of a visual in a band. So it's not just a K-pop thing. So examples of visuals in K-pop bands would include Jisoo is a visual of Blackpink and she certainly gets her share of endorsements and campaigns. Like she is literally a Dior ambassador. Zuyu is the visual of the band Twice and Salyun is the visual of band 
and mix. Irene is a visual of Red Velvet and Yuna is a visual of Girls' Generation. Have you noticed anything strange about all these idols that I've just shown you? All these admittedly beautiful K-pop idols also looked totally different naturally, but then as they pursued fame, they also began to transform their looks into the coveted K-pop look that is so famous today. So what the f*** happened? That, my friends, would be plastic surgery. It is rampant in the K-pop industry. Why? Well, that would be the totally unrealistic beauty expectations put on K-pop idols and young women in general. According to a few articles I read, apparently the K-pop beauty standards include double eyelids, V-shaped jawline, big doe-like eyes, pale, cold skin, slim figure, long legs, high nose bridge, straight eyebrows, pouty lips, small face and small facial features. Overall, apparently, the Korean or K-pop beauty standard is to look innocent. According to an article that I read on the website thevu.com, which I will also link down below, a small face is considered pretty because it makes you look like a child and thus younger. I thought that was odd. So because of these strict beauty standards, this has led millions of women to undergo plastic surgery, in particular, chin and jawline surgery, in order to achieve that V-shaped jawline. And it's strange because in Western culture, the opposite is considered the beauty standard. So in Western culture, a strong jawline is coveted. And women literally have filler injected into their jawline to create a bigger, stronger looking jawline. And it doesn't stop there. The rise of surgical nose jobs has been exponential with women seeking surgery in order to achieve that small, high bridged, pointy nose. So in order to fit in with K-pop beauty standards, one must also have small lips. Seems very different to what we're used to in Western culture where essentially the bigger your lips, the better. In K-pop, bigger is not necessarily better. K-pop idols are expected to withhold the innocent look and with that comes those big doe-like eyes. Unfortunately for lots of women, their eye shape is not naturally like that. And if you happen to have mono lids, which is really, really common in some countries, it is considered under these beauty standards a flaw, which in turn has led to millions of women undergoing double eyelid surgery. According to the website seolcosmeticsurgery.com, plastic surgery is as common for teens in Korea as it is for teens getting their driving license in America. Apparently gifting your children plastic surgery for graduating or as a gift is seen as quite normal. So I read a super interesting article and this one you guys have to read. I'm gonna link it in the description box down below. A former K-pop trainee, she was in one of these, you know, trainee companies, child pop star factory. Udius, I believe is how her name is pronounced. Please correct me if I'm wrong. She featured in an article for the BBC where she described her experience as a child in one of these pop star factories. So during her time in training as a child, she was in competition with another trainee to become a new girl group's visual. Udius was told that while the other girl was prettier, the company predicted that if Udius underwent plastic surgery, that she would then end up prettier than her competition and would then be ready to be the band's visual. Udius says, by Korean standards, I have a very big face, so they wanted to change the bridge of my nose and shave my jawline. The company couldn't force a trainee to have plastic surgery, but it was strongly encouraged. And remember, this is like children and teens that we're talking about. Plastic surgery is very normal in South Korea and the prospect of having surgery didn't bother me at all. I saw it as an investment in my future. The cost of the operation would have been added to my debt to the training company. She also goes on to say that it wasn't unusual for children to join the training company who had already undergone plastic surgery to look more K-pop and to stand out amongst their competition. You know, when I was a trainee, they when you're a trainee, they tell you like, oh, you need to get this done. You need to get this done. Like you need to fix this. Mm. And um, they would like tell me like they want me to shave my jaws, like shave my face. Oh, I got shave that too. bones oh, off. And man. you? Yeah. Why? But then I got like kind of like a square jaw. No, I You got the that, man jaw, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But they were like, on TV, you're going to look like Buzz Lightyear. I was like, all right, Buzz cool. Lightyear. I was like, <laughs> now we need to discuss the really quite serious aspect of K-pop culture, which is body image. Now, in Western culture, we are just as wild when it comes to body standards, don't get me wrong. We have BBLs and the Kardashians and liposuction and boob jobs and influencers who tell us to eat less but exercise more. Like, our body standards are just as bad. Let me make that abundantly clear. But the slim, thick, Kardashian-style body that is so popular in Western culture would not fly in K-pop culture. Instead of wanting to emulate the figure of Kim Kardashian, for example, to meet K-pop beauty standards, you must have a tall-ish 
but slim figure. So there is a popular band in K-pop called Twice and a member of that band, Momo, revealed that when she was a trainee, so when she was in one of these training companies, the child pop star factories, she was told she had to lose seven kilograms, which is about 15 pounds, before her debut as a K-pop idol. And so she resorted to eating nothing but a cube of ice for an entire week. She was so exhausted and starved that she was scared that she would go to sleep and not wake up again. Way, a former member of the K-pop group Crayon Pop, told the publication Insider that we weren't allowed to eat midnight snacks. Other snacks like chips and candy weren't allowed, so we would sneak out and eat it. Since they kept telling us not to, that made us want to eat it more. We would secretly buy it and eat it in the bathroom. There is literally videos online of what looked to be potentially the managers of K-pop idols literally snatching food out of K-pop idols' hands. to that all the videos online of k-pop idols literally fainting from exhaustion and hunger on stage it's like it's a serious problem according to that article that i mentioned earlier by udius for the bbc in her experience in the k-pop training camp weight was a constant concern to all the children she says everyone was required to be no heavier than 47 kilograms regardless of their age or height uh, this is children we're talking about. Does this not just sound like a recipe for body image disaster? She goes on to say that the children would have weekly weigh-ins, like this is a normal thing in these training companies. The children would have weekly weigh-ins where the trainees' bodies would be analyzed by the trainer and the child's weight would then be announced to everyone else in the room. If a child was over the designated weight, their food would be rationed. Yudia says that sometimes punishment, my word, not hers, because to me it sounds like punishment, would be so severe that entire meals would be taken away from the overweight child and the child would be given just water instead. Is it any wonder that there are now so many K-pop idols or people who wanted to be K-pop idols who now suffer with serious body image issues? Udius goes on to say that many of the children trainees had eating disorders, which is not surprising, with some of the kids developing anorexia or bulimia. And because the female body needs a certain amount of body fat in order to balance hormones, lots of the girls lost their periods. According to people who have been through the K-pop training programs, it isn't uncommon for children to literally pass out during training either from exhaustion or basically starvation and these crazy body standards don't just apply to women in the k-pop industry bts's jin shared that he was previously malnourished as he only ate a total of four chicken breasts a day for a year with no other vitamins. BTS's Jimin also revealed that he had a diet of eating only one meal a day for 10 days. This is scary stuff. Then we have K-pop's Jan Won Young, who sparked concern when pictures of her performing on stage looking very, very thin surfaced. 
Her fans were rightfully worried for her health as being that thin is not particularly healthy for most people. However, in saying that, her fans then discovered that those pictures had allegedly been photoshopped to make her look slimmer than she actually is in real life. However, this is the allegedly photoshopped image and this is allegedly the unphotoshopped image and to be honest, she looks very, very similar in both. Jang is reportedly about 5 foot 8 inches tall, which is really quite tall, so I just hope that she is eating enough to fuel her body and that the pressure of being a k-pop star is not getting to her this scary portrayal of what is attractive in a k-pop industry body is filtering down to k-pop fans like have a look on youtube for the i tried the k-pop diet and you'll see so many videos by fans who are following in these idols footsteps and trying out these crazy crazy restrictive diets to achieve the k-pop beauty standard i feel so bad for these k-pop idols and and potential k-pop idols these children in these training companies because it just seems like although they will get the fame and the adoration of so many fans at what cost and who is looking after their health both mentally and physically of these k-pop stars <sighs> i don't know anyway that's my thoughts on it um let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about k-pop i know a lot of you have a lot more knowledge on k-pop than i do i'm going to keep reading about it because i find it really really interesting and also i think the music is awesome and the k-pop stars are so talented like it takes a heck of a lot of talent and energy to not only sing, but sing and dance at the same time on stage, morning and night, like it's crazy. They're crazy talented. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave this video here. I love your guts and I will see you in my next one. Bye.